So let us consider the case. So we have a timeline, and we start at time 0. This is time 3, this is time 6. So we deposit the $100 at time 0. And then we deposit the $100 uh, X dollars at time 3. And then we're told that between time 3 and time 6, we earn interest of X dollars under the interest rate environment where the force of interest is equal to t squared over 100. So the problem is, what is x? How do we find it? So first, let's, let us find how much money you have at time 3. So at time 3, how much money do you have? So the money at time 3 comes from two things, right? It comes from the $100 that accumulates at time 3, and it comes from x. So we have the x that we deposit at time 3, plus the $100 that accumulates to time 3. So this is the amount of money that we have in time 3. And of course, this is the accumulation function. So how much money do we have at time 6? So we need to find how much money we have at time 6. And the difference between these two amounts, the difference between these two amounts, will be the amount of interest that we earned, which is equal to x. So we, we need to find the amount we have at time 6. So let us just consider if we have a3 dollars at time 3 we will have a $6, right? That's just how the accumulation function works. So similarly, if we have $1 at time 3, we would have a6 over a $3 at time 6. It's just a matter of ratio. So at time 6, how much money would you have? So by the same reasoning, we would have this multiplied by a6 over a $3. So the difference between this term and this term, which is the amounts we have at time 3, is going to be equal to the amount of interest, which is equal to x. So now let us just arrange the term so we can find what x is. So obviously we can dump the x to this side. So let's do just that. That's 2x. And we also have, a, have an x term here, so we can take it to the right side. And also on the left, uh, you can see that these a3s, they cancel out. So we have 100 a6 minus 100 a3. And so with a bit of rearranging, we see that x is equal to 100 a6 minus a3 divided by 2 minus a6 divided by a3. And so now all we have to do is find the accumulation function at. And we can substitute our numbers in and we can find what x is. So let me just upload the page. So what is, uh, what is the accumulation function? So the force of interest is equal to t squared over 100. So by the formula that we derived earlier, we can find the accumulation function. <clears throat> now the bounds are in terms of t, so I can't use t in, my uh, in the integral, so I'll use y. It's just a variable, so it doesn't really matter. So e is equal to y to the power of 3rd divided by 300. 0 to t. So it's equal to e to the power of t to the third divided by 300. And so now we can substitute our numbers in. So uh, don't forget our, uh, our x. Our x is equal to 100 a6 minus a3 divided by 2 minus a6 divided by a3. So what is a6? So a6 is 6 to the power of 3 is 216. Three to the power of th uh, three is 27. And then two minus the a6 over a3 is just, that's just this term divided by this term. And so we get e to the 100 and 89 and so if you put this into your calculator and plug your numbers in, you'll get 784.59. And so that is your answer. And so there we have it. This is equal to x. And I hope this video helped, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.